If you believe yourself to be Jesus, then you have a huge amount of arrogance and hubris. <laughs> Jesus was a far better person than you are now mm -hmm. and better in the first century than you will ever be. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 18, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Mm -hmm. You are going to hell for your claims and misleading people. Mm. It's not really a question, is it? Not really. <laughs> and uh, I've got to say, I struggle with how to convey that because I don't really want to embody the emotions of the person who made that statement. Yeah, of course, but. the emotions of this person, a Christian, um, who is judging me, and not, they're not even letting God judge me. They have judged me, <laughs> yeah. which is very interesting in itself because that's directly against what their own Bible says they should be doing. So I find the hypocrisy of many of the Christians who email me these kind of emails quite, quite large in the sense that they, their own Bible tells them they shouldn't be doing the things that they're doing when they say these kind of things to me. However, I'm perfectly happy to address the, acclaim, the claims that I'm arrogant and I'm perfectly happy to address the claim that I'm going to hell <laughs> because there are certain truths in amongst the, there that need to be said. Firstly, um, if we look at the claims that I'm arrogant because I'm saying that I'm Jesus. Well, firstly, it's not a very logical statement because uh, what if I am Jesus? Then I'm obviously not being arrogant if I'm claiming to be Jesus, the person I am. Also, let's say that I'm deluded. See, it could be that I'm quite a humble man, but quite deluded and, uh, and manipulated by some other force. Let's call it a spirit one. They'd call it the devil. And actually, I could be quite misled and deluded uh, claiming myself to be Jesus and still be quite a humble person. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the reality is there that I might not be arrogant there either. I could also be just having a joke with everybody. That's a possibility. And if I am, then it's a, possibly a bit of a cruel joke. But, um, you know, so, so I might be able to be labelled as cruel perhaps. But uh, if I'm just having a joke with people, I'm certainly not necessarily arrogant. Mm. <laughs> I might be just pointing out a heap of false beliefs that people have as a result of their Bible-based teachings. Now, obviously, if I'm not Jesus and I know I'm not and I'm claiming that I'm Jesus, then I'm arrogant. I agree with that. Yeah. But that's only one of very many possibilities and, and, not, uh, and you can't say for certain that just because I'm saying that I'm Jesus that I actually means that I'm arrogant. Arrogance uh, comes from a condition of a lack of humility. And, and if I lacked humility, then I'd certainly be arrogant. But, uh, but you know, the people around me generally know, and you live with me, yeah. <laughs> and you know, you know that I'm humble to all things. So, yeah. so the reality is in my day-to-day -day life, I don't demonstrate arrogance. Now, most of the people believe that I'm arrogant as soon as I claim to be Jesus. And my suggestion is at some point, Jesus, when he returns, is going to claim to be Jesus. And so it makes, does that mean he's being arrogant too? You know, of course not. So, so you know, I am Jesus. I claim to be Jesus. That's not an arrogant state. And, uh, and, I, and I, don't, I fail to see any logic in the accusation for a start is what I'm pointing out. Yeah. All of the Christians who claim that I'm being arrogant by claiming to be Jesus and all of the media who claims that I'm being arrogant by claiming to be Jesus are missing one important fact, and that is that if I am Jesus, I'm not being arrogant at all. So my suggestion is their logic is, is very illogical. Mm. It makes no sense. And, and, you know, it appears to me that people are on the earth are willing to imbibe a lack of logic based on whether they want to believe something or not. My suggestion is, let's be more logical. If, you, if you're logical, you'll be able to easily determine whether a person is what other people claim him to be or not. So that's the first thing I think I'd like to say about this claim that I'm arrogant. Yeah. I am Jesus, therefore I'm not arrogant. Yeah. Secondly, uh, the second thing I'd like to point out to people is that I'm actually much better right now than the Jesus of the, that the Bible portrays. And in fact, in the first century, I was also much better than the Jesus the Bible portrays me to be. Yeah. And um, if I can point out areas that I am, am, am much better, <laughs> for example. Now, if you look at the book of Revelation, for example, New Testament book of Revelation, it says that Jesus would, would come and his robe would be dipped in blood. His name would be the word of God. 
the armies of heaven, this is in Revelation 19, 11 to 16, the armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. Wow. Now, I, I am much better than that. I, I have no desire to destroy anybody. I don't want to strike down the nations. I am not coming with an iron scepter. I'm coming with the ideas and ideals of love. I am not going to tread the rhyme press of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty because God has no wrath and has no fury. <laughs> right? and, so, and so this verse portrays me as some power megalomaniac, which I am not mm. and never have been. Now, I am much better than that. I don't, I, don't, I don't have any of those desires in me whatsoever. Another verse I'd like to mention is in, um, where is it, Matthew, or John, five, John 5. It talks about me, First John, uh, yeah, John 5 verse, um, what have I got here, 22 and 23. Sorry, I didn't find this one in advance. Um, it says, moreover, the Father judges no one, but is in, this is my word supposedly, Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son, that all may honour the Son just as they honour the Father. He who does not honour the Son does not honour the Father who sent him. Now, this portrays me as a person who's seeking honour, that's seeking to be able to judge his fellow man. I have never been a per such a person who would want to seek judgment over another, and I will never be such a person. God does not want me to judge anybody because God himself doesn't judge anybody because all of God's laws do it for him. Mm -hmm. There is no need for me to be a judge of anybody ever. I have never claimed to be a judge of anybody. And, but this verse is stating that I did. This Jesus is a lot worse than I am. I have no desire to be a judge of anybody. I'm not arrogant enough to assume that God would ever put me in a position of judgment of another. So I'm much better than the person portrayed in that verse. And um, if we look at some other verses, like Matthew 25, 31 to 33, for example, where it talks about the end of the days and says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, as if I'm seeking, no, I'm, I'm meant to be saying these words, as if I'm seeking glory. I'm not seeking any glory. I never have sought any glory. And it says, and all the angels with him, they will sit in his, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. I don't have a throne. I am never going to have a throne. I do not want kingship. I am better than that. I do not, I know that my brothers are my brothers. I do not assume that I am better than any of my brothers and sisters. It says all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people. I will not separate people. Their own actions separate them one from another. Their own actions tell who they belong to, mm -hmm. whether they belong to God or whether they belong to, uh, they are an enemy of God or try to set themselves up as an enemy of God. It says, the king will reply, referring to myself, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Like, it's basically saying that I'm going to commit genocide of any unbeliever. Hmm. Now, if you look at on the earth at this point in time, if you assume all of the Christians of any denomination are believers, there's about one and a half billion believers. That means that there are over five and a half billion non-believers of what the Bible says mm -hmm. on this earth presently. Mm -hmm. Now, according to this verse, I am going to kill them all. That would make me the worst person in human history when it comes to genocide. That's what it would make me. I am never going to do it. I am better than that. It's not, easy, it's not hard to be better than that, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, the average person on the planet is better than that, yeah. <laughs> right? So, so I am much better than the, the, what the Bible portrays me to be. If you look at what the Bible, how the Bible says that I treated women, for example, and it says that, uh, that a woman came to me and, and knelt before him. It says, Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Now, a woman is coming to me, according to this verse, asking for assistance. And according to this verse, I am stating that I wouldn't like give her the bread of life, 
because it would be taking away the bread of life from the children of God, the Israelites, and giving it to somebody else because she was supposedly a Samaritan now, or a Canaanite woman. And, and is this what I would do? Is this how I treat women? I treat women far better than that. I treat people far better than that. I treat people as if they're better than dogs, right? I don't call them dogs. They're better than dogs. Although sometimes they don't act better than dogs, which is unfortunate. But I don't call them dogs when they are humans. Yeah. And I don't treat women as if they are worse than men. Yeah. Right? I'm better than that. I'm better than the, the Jesus portrayed here in your Bible, like in the Bible you know, that people say they believe. If you, if you look at uh, Matthew 15 again, so that was Matthew 15, 25 and 26. If you look at Matthew, uh, where am I up to? 10. Matthew 10, 34 and 35. Here's another verse. It says, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Now, what a load of rubbish, to be honest. I never came to bring a sword to the earth. It says, it says next, For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be members of his own household. Now, while I do agree that many people in a person's household may set themselves up as enemies of each other, it will not be because of anything I've done. It will be completely the opposite to that. It will be because they do not want to follow my teachings or advice. I came to bring peace to the earth, not a sword. Mm. Right? The Bible says there that I stated that I came to do the opposite. Now, if anybody in this world currently said to you, I came to bring a sword to the world, what would you, how would you view him? You'd view him as a what? Violent. As a violent. Uh, someone seeking power, someone wishing to uh, harm others harm people. Yeah. And purposely wanting to harm others, right? So, so and, and that's really what this is saying. Now, because it's the Bible and because I'm meant to be Jesus, of course I can get away with all this. No, <laughs> no, I can't. This is unloving behaviour. I would never be involved with it. I'm better than that. And to be honest, the average person on earth is better than that too. Yeah. So again, I can't see any correlation between how the Bible describes me and how I myself am. So, so when people say to me that I will never be the person you know, that the Jesus in the first century was, I, I say, well, if you're basing that comment on what you read in your Bible, thank goodness for that, right? Because whatever you believe the Jesus of the Bible to be, it, it doesn't portray him as a very good person. It portrays him as a power mad megalomaniac who's willing to commit genocide, who treats women badly and treats families badly, and I do none of those things. <laughs> so I'm better than that. I suppose there's a lot of contradictions in there as well, isn't there? Of there course. is a lot of accounts of you being very loving and kind. Of course. And so this is where people are selective, is it, about what they see Well, but very much character. so. But also there is this underlying justification that people who are wicked deserve to be treated in this way. Mm -hmm. And I can't agree with that. According to what I said in the first century, some of which is included in the same book of the Bible, it says that people who are wicked deserve to be loved. In fact, I say in, in, in Matthew, I say that, that people need to be loved. You must love. It says, you have heard that it said, love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? The average person on earth loves the people, you know, treat people well who they love generally, you know, but how hard is it to love your enemy? Much, much more difficult. I was encouraging people to love your enemy. I said that that's what God was like. He loved yeah. his enemies. Now, any person who loves his enemies won't kill them. Killing a person is murder, and that's the height of unloving behaviour towards your enemy. Right? How contradictory is that? Now, again, it's driven by this underlying desire in most people that they want somebody to come along and get rid of the people they want to get rid of. Yeah. Well, to be more specific, to get rid of the people who they have already judged as wicked. Not, not God, they have mm -hmm. judged as wicked. They want me to get rid of them for them, right? And they want me to save them because they judge themselves as righteous. Now, any person who has that, who has that feeling is already wicked. 
that's already a wicked concept because the reality is unless you see your enemies as, as people that you need to love, you are not following my teachings. And if I came to destroy the wicked, I would not be following my own teachings, which is hypocritical. Mm -hmm. I'd be the pinnacle of hypocritical Hypocr behaviour. Yep. I'd yep. be the pinnacle of it yep. if I did this. I would be the, genos the genocide of the, you know, of the entire existence of mankind. I would be the person engaged in, in doing it. I, how could I ever do such a thing when I was advising people to be loving in their behaviour towards their enemies? So it makes no logical sense to believe that the, the Jesus of the Bible right, is better than I am mm. because the reality is the Jesus of the Bible is willing to do worse things than I would ever be willing to do. Right? So, and I say to any person who's listening that if you think that I, Jesus, is like the character in the Bible that it says that I am, then, then you have a very poor opinion of me already. <laughs> very poor opinion of me. And, and to be honest, I am never going to be such a person. You know, in my worst state, I was never such a person. <laughs> so so the, I feel that uh, these particular statements uh, are just statements born out of a totally logical analysis of the Bible. You know, there's these, these Christians who make these statements towards me as saying that I am worse and will never be Jesus' bootlace. And while yeah. at the same time Jesus is willing to do all of these things, by the way, which these same Christians condemn in any world ruler doing the same thing, yeah. which, which is ironic. Like the Christians themselves condemn world rulers such as Na G um, Hitler in G Nazi Germany. In fact, that was their justification for going to war with him. So, so, so if I am going to set myself up like a Hitler and destroy all the people that I think should be destroyed and, and save all the people that I think should be saved, surely that makes me no better than the man, the man that they condemned in the Second World War. Mm. Like, it makes no logical sense at all, does it? No. So, so that's the second reason why I feel this verse is flawed. Uh, this, this person's comment, by the way, uh, it, yes. is flawed. They've also said... Oh, is there any more you want to ask about? No, 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 go ahead. They've also said that that I will go to hell because of my arrogance and hubris, right? Yes. Now, a person who believes in love and practices love and truth in their day-to-day -day life, such as I do, can never go to hell. That's the reality. God has made a system where the only people who go to hell are the people who are unloving and the people who are violent and the people who are destructive and the people who are damaging other people, and I'm not doing any of those things. So it's actually a physical impossibility for me to go to hell in any sense. It's also, uh, hell, as it's understood by the Christians, is that ruled by a Satan, the devil. But there is no Satan, the devil. There is no devil that rules the hells. And so I can never go to hell to be tormented by this Satan, the devil, mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. right? So this is another false belief perpetrated in order to scare people as well. Mm -hmm. so, so I am never going to go to hell, even though you want me to, for those people who say who said these, uh, this question, yeah. even though you want me to go to hell, I am never going to go to hell. I am completely safe from it because I practice love in my day-to-day -day life and I practice truth in my day-to-day -day life and I am sincere with everything that I do and say. Whether I'm misled or not is immaterial. Yeah. The fact is that I practice these things in my day-to-day -day life and so I cannot go to hell. Right? And by the way, any of you who practice the same things, you can't go to hell either. <laughs> you can't go to hell when you're practicing love. You only go into the hells of the spirit world when you don't practice love. And this is what I suggested in, that is recorded in the Gospel accounts. There's a record of me talking about the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man treated Lazarus badly. Lazarus couldn't even eat from his table. He had to eat what the dogs ate. The rich man treated him badly and unlovingly. He, he didn't kill him. He just treated him badly and he went to hell. Imagine what's going to happen to the people who kill people. Hmm. They're going to go to a worse condition again. And, and so, you know, that's what I stated in the first century as well. So their own Bible contradicts, them, contradicts itself, itself with regard to what will be the outcome for a person who believes untruth. I stated in the first century that it wasn't the belief of anything that mattered. 
It was instead the practice of love that mattered. And if you practiced love, you would always be in a better condition. That's what makes you my disciples when you practice love. If you can't practice love, you're not my disciple yet, even though you think you are. And there are many people who are listening to my words today who are still not my disciples either mm -hmm. because they are not practicing love in their day-to-day -day life. They're not acting in harmony with love in what they do. So, you know, again, I can't, I can't agree with what, a lot of what they say. And there's a lovely verse in John 5, which I'd like to mention because it's, uh, it's a verse that uh, most Christians probably don't think about too much perhaps. And it's in John 5, uh, 39 and 40, and this is what it says. It says, um, you study, you diligently study the scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. Hmm. Now, in the first century, I had many people who called the Torah the scriptures, or they included the prophets sometimes as the scriptures. And they said, because I wasn't coming like the prophets and the Torah said, exactly what the Christians are saying today. They said, uh, you didn't come, you're not coming as a king and you're not going to destroy, you know, you, you're meant to be coming as a king. You're meant to get rid of the Roman yoke. You're meant to, like, what difference is that between that and the Christian belief today? Yeah. You're meant to be coming a king and get rid of the wicked yoke is yeah. the only difference in the statement. And they're saying, and I'm saying to them, look, you study the scriptures, the so-called scriptures diligently, and yet you can't even recognise the person that the scriptures foretell is coming because you do not understand his role. You do not understand what my role is. My role is not to destroy the wicked. It's to help the wicked change. My role is not to harm any person, but rather to help them change through truth. So, so any person who believes otherwise, has, has, might be a diligent studier of the scriptures, but at the end of the day, they are wrong. They, they, they are wrong because they do not understand the role of love mm -hmm. in my life and in my character and nature, nor do they understand the role of love in God and God's life and God's nature, nor do they understand our underlying desire, which is to change people who are wicked to help them become better people, right? If they want to change, even. We don't want to force it upon them. We don't want to control them in their behaviour. And, and, and I feel quite strongly that uh, any person who tells me that I'm going to hell for my behaviour has no understanding whatsoever of God and God's nature, nor do they have any understanding whatsoever of the emotions that are inside of themselves, which are very, very damaging, which are judgmental, which I condemned and which is recorded, ironically, in their own Bible that I condemned. Mm. That I said that if you judge others, you'd be better off, according to the Bible, it says you'd be better off putting a rock around your neck and throwing yourself into the sea, is what I said. Now, that is, is true. Is that what you said? Well, I said something similar to that, yes. A millstone around your neck and thrown in the sea. And you'd be better off, in other words, suiciding than judging yourself or judging others, mm -hmm. because that's what you're doing to your soul. You're pulling your soul down, down, down when you judge other people. So when you judge me, just because I'm saying that I'm Jesus, you judge me, you are demonstrating that you are breaking your own Jesus words in your own Bible that you say is God's word. You are demonstrating you're a hypocrite, actually. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not, I'm not stating that I believe everything in the Bible is God's word, because I don't. I never have believed it. I have the advantage of not believing it because I was there <laughs> and I know what I said and I know what I didn't say. So I have the advantage over the average person in the sense that I know that it was false and, it, and I was falsely portrayed. And as I've just pointed out from those verses, I have been deeply falsely portrayed yeah. as some kind of power-hungry, glory maniac who, who wants to kill people and cause trouble on the earth and cause a lack of peace and the sword and court, you know, treat women badly. And, and none of these things is what I was. So you know, these are all just statements that are made. And, and I feel many Christians, if they felt their heart, they'd go, wow, do I really believe Jesus was like this? Because if I believe he was like this, he's not much different to Stalin or Hitler. Hmm. 
and I'm a lot different to both of them. Although even with them, I hope that they will change and become like God. <laughs> sure.